Hey there, folks. I'm... In the last video, I shared my observations from performance testing the Skyrim Elder Gleam mod list at 1080p when using Cabbage ENB. In this video, we'll complete the narrative by including the measurements for 2K and 4K resolutions. If you're interested in the specifics of the hardware and environment configuration choices I made, do check out the first video in this series, which I have linked in the description. Including 2K and 4K metrics has significantly increased the number of data points I'll present, so I'm going to do my best to keep the readout brief. If you want to tinker around and perform your own analysis, be sure to check out the interactive chart links, which are also in this video's description. Without further ado, let's take a look at the results. We'll start by returning to the first benchmark scenario, which takes us from Helgen Keep along the shores of Lake Illinolta and ending in Falkreath. I have omitted 2K and 4K testing from the 1080 Ti machine due to the degree that performance declined. Therefore, the measurements on that machine are unchanged from the previous video. At 2K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 57.38 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 59.27 on Normal, and 68.4 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being 3% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 19% faster than Ultra. At 4K, the 3080 Ti machine is right on the edge of what I'd consider playable, at least as it pertains to densely populated outdoor environments. The 3080 Ti scored 35.23 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 35.74 on Normal, and 39.98 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to the Normal Profile being 1.4% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 13.5% faster than Ultra. Moving on to the 4090 machine, at 2K it scored 103.71 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 106.37 on Normal, and 115.83 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to the Normal Profile being 2.5% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 12% faster than Ultra. At 4K, the 4090 machine scored 64.05 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 63.83 on Normal, and 70.26 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being 0.3% slower than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 10% faster than Ultra. Regarding the analysis of the Ultra and Normal profiles, I reran the benchmark five different times to validate that Normal performed worse than Ultra. In two runs, Normal was slower by 0.1 and 0.3%. In one run, Normal was identical to Ultra. And in one run, Normal was 0.1% faster than Ultra. I think it's fair to say that Normal and Ultra are going to produce very similar performance numbers in this particular benchmark. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profile on the 3080 Ti, 2K is 20% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 39% slower than 2K. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profile on the 4090, 2K is 12% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 38% slower than 2K. All of the page file charts are going to look similar today. To isolate and display just the 2K and 4K lines, I've hidden those lines that represent 1080p benchmarks. The lines on the chart are typically grouped together by the Ultra, Normal, or Performance Profile used, but there is some situational variability that can alter some of the lines positioning. In the Helgen Keep benchmark, the 4K Ultra Profile uses the largest amount of page file resources, ranging from 19 gigabytes on the low end to 20.6 gigabytes on the high end. It's also worth isolating the 4K Ultra lines for both the 3080 Ti and 4090 machines, to quickly point out that even though one of these machines has 16 gigabytes of RAM and the other machine has 32 gigabytes of RAM, that the size of the page file used on both is virtually identical. That takes care of the performance highlights for the first benchmark zone. Next, we'll talk about the performance in the second benchmark zone, which takes place in the forest around Riften. At 2K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 58.2 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 60.12 on Normal, and 65.72 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being 3% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 13% faster than Ultra. At 4K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 35 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 35.84 on Normal, and 38.05 FPS on the Performance Profile. 
This equates to normal being 2.4% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 9% faster than ultra. The 4090 machine at 2K scored 99.42 FPS on the ultra profile, 109.56 on normal, and 116.79 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 10% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 17% faster than ultra. At 4K, the 4090 machine scored 63.36 FPS on the ultra profile, 62.46 on normal, and 67.01 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 1.4% slower than ultra, while the performance profile is 6% faster than ultra. Regarding the analysis of the ultra and normal profiles, I re-ran the benchmark five different times to validate performance. Both profiles took turns being roughly one frame faster than the other. However, the normal profile was slower than ultra on three of the five runs. Once again, normal and ultra are going to produce similar performance numbers in this benchmark. Comparing just the FPS of the ultra profile on the 3080 Ti, 2K is 18% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 40% slower than 2K. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profile on the 4090, 2K is 17% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 36% slower than 2K. In the Riften benchmark, the 4K Ultra Profile uses the largest amount of page file resources, ranging from 18.09 GB on the low end to 19.56 GB on the high end. On the bottom of the chart are the 2K performance and performance without depth of field and ambient occlusion profiles that are just below 14 gigabytes on the low end, up to 15.2 gigabytes on the high end. That takes care of Riften, let's move on and talk about the third benchmark zone, which takes place in and around Dawnstar. Benchmarking in Dawnstar will oftentimes reveal bizarre performance patterns depending on which modelist you are playing and the hardware you are playing it on. Now that the 2K and 4K performance numbers have been added to the charts, this reality will become more obvious. At 2K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 79.79 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 80.77 on Normal, and 86.2 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being 1.2% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 8% faster than Ultra. At 4K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 44.92 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 44.91 on Normal, and 46.18 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being nearly identical to the Ultra Profile, while the Performance Profile is 3% faster than Ultra. The 4090 machine at 2K scored 139.78 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 140.18 on normal, and 145.45 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being a time and space shattering 0.3% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 4% faster than ultra. What is particularly interesting about 2K benchmarks in Dawnstar on the 4090 is that performance is roughly identical to the number seen when benchmarking at 1080p. At 4K, the 4090 machine scored 79.53 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 84.71 on Normal, and 88.53 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being 6.5% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 11% faster than Ultra. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profile on the 3080 Ti, 2K is 17% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 44% slower than 2K. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profiles on the 4090, 2K is 3% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 43% slower than 2K. In the Dawnstar benchmark, the 4K Ultra Profile once again uses the largest amount of page file resources, ranging from 17.75 GB on the low end to 20.12 GB on the high end. On the bottom of the chart is the 1080 Ti Performance Profile, utilizing 12 to 14 GB of page file. That's it for Dawnstar, I'll get my waders out as we head back to Morthal and the Morthal Swamp. At 2K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 57.66 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 60.1 on Normal, and 68.31 FPS on the Performance Profile. This equates to Normal being 4% faster than Ultra, while the Performance Profile is 18% faster than Ultra. At 4K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 34.84 FPS on the Ultra Profile, 35.72 on Normal, and 39.18 FPS on the Performance Profile. 
This equates to normal being 2.5% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 12% faster than ultra. The 4090 machine at 2K scored 105.42 FPS on the ultra profile, 108 on normal, and 117.63 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 2.4% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 11.5% faster than ultra. At 4K, the 4090 machine scored 62.94 FPS on the ultra profile, 65.26 on normal, and 70.47 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 4% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 12% faster than ultra. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profile on the 3080 Ti, 2K is 21% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 40% slower than 2K. Comparing just the FPS of the Ultra Profile on the 4090, 2K is 9% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 40% slower than 2K. In terms of page file usage, the 4K Ultra Profile sits atop the pack with fairly even usage, between 19 and 20.5 gigabytes, while the 1080 Ti and the performance profile is utilizing the least amount of page file resources, between 12 and 14 gigabytes. Four zones down and one to go. Our last benchmark today will once again take us from Markarth to Whiterun. At 2K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 61.07 FPS on the Ultra profile, 64.68 on normal, and 69.81 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 6% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 14% faster than ultra. At 4K, the 3080 Ti machine scored 36.53 FPS on the ultra profile, 37.68 on normal, and 39.82 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 3% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 9% faster than ultra. Moving on to the 4090 machine, at 2K, it scored 112.13 FPS on Ultra, 118.63 on Normal, and 124.95 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to Normal being 6% faster than Ultra, while the performance profile is 11.4% faster than Ultra. At 4K, the 4090 machine scored 69.87 FPS on the Ultra profile, 70.82 on Normal, and 74.47 FPS on the performance profile. This equates to normal being 1.3% faster than ultra, while the performance profile is 7% faster than ultra. Comparing just the FPS of the ultra profile on the 3080 Ti, 2K is 22% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 40% slower than 2K. Comparing just the FPS of the ultra profile on the 4090, 2K is 11% slower than 1080p, and 4K is 38% slower than 2K. Page vial usage resembles previous zones with the 4K Ultra Profile on the 4090 utilizing the most resources, topping out at 22.5 gigabytes, while the 1080 Ti and the Performance Profile utilize the least at 11.46 gigabytes at its lowest point. And with that, the full suite of benchmarks have been completed for 1080p, 2K, and 4K resolutions when running the Elder Gleam mod list with Cabbage e and B. Before I close out this segment, I'd like to leave you with three additional thoughts and call out a few notable data points that were observed. With this testing, I focused exclusively on performance testing Skyrim's outdoor environments, as they tend to be more worthy of benchmarking than most of the game's interior locations. I think it's important to call out that even though the 1080 Ti was omitted from 2K and 4K testing, when it comes to interior location performance, less capable GPUs can still perform fairly well. The second thing I wanted to address, especially for folks who like to do their own performance testing at high resolutions, is an important consideration to ensure you're gathering accurate numbers. If I quickly show three on-screen display examples from MSI Afterburner, there is an obvious difference in the FPS values. However, all three of these examples are supposedly running at 4K with the exact same settings. How then could one example be 25 to 30 frames per second higher than the other two? In the first example, Windows is set to a resolution of 3840 by 2160 with 100% desktop scaling. In the second example, Windows is also set to a resolution of 3840 by 2160, but the display scaling value is 150%. Most high-resolution monitors running at 4K demand a higher than 100% scaling value just to make text readable. 
So, this setting is a common requirement. Unfortunately, this results in the game rendering at a 2K resolution of 2560 by 1440 automatically. The higher the window scaling value, the lower the game's resolution will be. 3840 by 2160 is 50% larger than 2560 by 1440, so that's how the game's resolution is being decided. In the third example, Windows is running at 3840 by 2160 with a desktop scaling value of 150%, but I have configured the Skyrim SE.exe executable to run with the high DPI compatibility option to force display scaling priority to the application. This forces the game to ignore the window scaling value and render at 4K, thus resulting in my benchmark numbers matching the expected performance range. There might be other factors to consider in your own situation regarding the configuration of the auto resolution and SSE display tweaks mods, but I hope addressing this will help others in their own benchmarking. The third point I wanted to mention is that when it comes to Skyrim modding and using an ENB in particular, sometimes we find ourselves in situations where reducing quality settings is a necessity to achieve good performance. Changing the quality profile in Mod Organizer is another example of this. However, many of these so-called Ultra Profile or ENB features don't necessarily mean image quality is objectively better. Oftentimes, it just means that the output image is softer or that objects cast subtle shadow details. In fact, when I'm in the mood to sit down and play Skyrim for the experience, I do so on my 4K projector that's throwing an image nearly 10 feet wide, using a modified normal quality profile, and the image is razor sharp while preserving texture and environment details that rival ultra but with decently increased FPS. The point I'll leave you with on this subjective subject is that fantastic image quality while not using the Ultra Profile is very much achievable, so don't immediately feel like you are missing out by not playing Skyrim on the Ultra Profile. Those are the three additional things I wanted to share, and now I'll summarize some of the highlights of my testing. The absolute maximum gameplay GPU RAM usage observed was 11,862 megabytes, or just under 12 gigabytes, on the 14700K and 4090 using the Ultra Profile in 4K on the Dawnstar Benchmark Zone. Coincidentally, the highest I've ever seen GPU RAM usage was on the loading screen while switching save files. I've seen GPU RAM usage spike on the save screen to nearly 13 GB, but I suspect this is a momentary blip while the VRAM was swapping resources, because it only lasted a couple of seconds in each case and immediately dropped by several GB in a matter of seconds. The absolute maximum gameplay system RAM usage observed was 9,982 megabytes, or just under 10 gigabytes, on the 8700K and 3080 Ti using the Ultra Profile in 4K in the Markarth the White Run benchmark zone. The absolute maximum page file usage observed was 22.5 gigabytes on the 14700K and 4090 using the Ultra Profile in 4K on the Markarth the White Run benchmark zone. Somewhat notable is that the 14700K machine is one of the two test machines with 32 gigabytes of RAM. I've yet to decide what I'll benchmark next, but some options are to continue with Elder Gleam using another ENB like Dawnfire or Rudy, another mod list like Novus or Lorem, or something else entirely. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts as well, so if you have an opinion, leave me a comment below. For now, I'm going to take a few days of R&R by hiking some Smoky Mountain trails. Looking at too many numbers for too long makes me uneasy, and there have been a lot of numbers to sift through while making these last two videos. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration, thanks for watching, and... out.